Welcome back to Maybe It's Spiritual. What up? Hello. Welcome back, Nick. It's been a minute. It has. Holidays are over. I am back. New year, new Nick. So tonight we're talking about sex cults. Sex cults. No, we're not. Aw. Surprise attack. We've picked topics that no, ah! the other one doesn't know. <laughs> Matt knows his topic. I know mine. Nick knows nothing. I'm just here for the ride. He's here for the ride. <laughs> uh, yeah. So tonight we are doing... Surprise tag. Matt ah. is going to lead us off with his story on... I'm pointing to him. You can't see that. On Dudley Town. Do you guys know about Dudley Town, Connecticut? No. No. Not at all. All right. Was, this will be a fun one then. I uh, saw a Mr. Ballin video a couple weeks ago on it. Uh, if you want to check it out, it's called A Forest So Evil It's Illegal to Enter. Whoa. So good clickbaity title. And um, I use a lot of direct quotes from Mr. Ballin, and I also dived a whole lot deeper. So I'm going to tell the story in mis- true Mr. Ballin fashion. You have typed notes tonight, dude. I have. Wow. I have typed notes. That's legit. I I realize I realize I well, it's Love a story, it. oh. so I'm going to be reading it. So oh, it's not okay. as much as you think. Oh, okay. Okay. But I realize I type a lot faster than I write. So. That's yeah. fair. Might as well type, right? Muzzle mm, type. type, right? Muzzle type. Typewriter. Typewriter. Okay. <laughs> you guys ready? Oh, yeah. Let's jump in. All right. So, this is a story, okay? <laughs> okay. All right. It was a bright summer's day in 1906. This is a long time ago. When William C. Clark and his wife Harriet were driving through a beautiful part of northern Connecticut called Litchfield County. Wait, they had cars in 1906? Mm-hmm. Okay, continue. Yeah. It was a hilly area with tons of winding roads. They were trying to scout out an area to build their second home. The couple lived in New York City, where Dr. Clark had a full-time practice as an oncologist, which is a cancer doctor. Oh. I had to look it up. He was a professor. He was also a professor at Columbia University for phys- phys- physicians and surgeons. They loved the city, but it was hectic. So they wanted to find a place to be able to get away from all the noise. So they drove, they, were, they drove through Litchfield County, and they went through one of those covered bridges that kind of looked like a, a barn. You know like what I'm talking CP about? Hollow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Headless Horseman and stuff. Correct. Yes. And they're looking around us like this picturesque view of like rolling hills, and it's just beautiful. And, and it like per- perfectly encapsulated like what they had envisioned, you know? And... So, like I said, beautiful rolling hills, a huge shaded forest that was completely secluded. So, like, they could just completely unplug. They found an access road to the to the forest, and they took it. The road was really overgrown, so they had to get out on foot and hike to the tree line. Once they entered the forest, everything got darker from this massive canopy of trees. Everything became cool and refreshing. They heard birds chirping, insects... Animals scurrying around, and the sun po- and when the sun poked through the trees, everything looked like it shimmered. Um, the forest is on a hillside with mica in it, and mica is a mineral that sparkles when when the sun hits it. And through the forest, there is an opening in the field full of apple trees. In the center of the apple trees was a deer eating apples right off the tree. They passed bright, beautiful patches of roses, lilacs, and beautiful yellow, bitter tansy flowers. They walked back into the forest and found themselves stepping over babbling brooks and could hear streams and waterfalls in the distance. Lastly, there were owls. The deeper they walked into the forest, the more they could hear owls hooting from all over. To the Clarks, this made the forest feel enchanted. The owls were personally greeting them. Now, side note, I find owls super creepy. Owls are super creepy. They certainly can't be. Yeah. Maybe it's because I watched a lot of Twin Peaks, but... I mean, that would do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, by the time this couple had turned around and headed back to their car, they had already made up their minds that they were going to build their second home in the forest. Once they got back to New York City, they promptly put, out, put in the paperwork for a thousand acres of land in that forest in Connecticut. The forest was called Dark Entry. It was named that because of the entry of the forest that looked like it was dark all the time. Barely any light could make its way through the thick cover of trees. 
At one time, there had been a town inside the Dark Entry Forest. But there were no longer any people that lived there. The only remnants of the town were a couple stone walls and remnants of the, some of the home's foundations. The Clarks had seen some of the remnants as they walked through the forest. They weren't alarmed by it. In fact, they thought it added some charm to the area. After the land purchase was finalized, Dr. Clark started looking around for local contractors in Connecticut to build their home in the Dark Entry Forest. However, there was no contractors who were willing to do so. No matter how much money they offered them, everybody said no. I'm like, you, you can't offer me enough money. None of them gave a straight answer as to why. Dr. Clark just assumed it wasn't a big enough job for the contractors to be willing to go all the way to the Dark Entry Forest for. It was isolated. It was kind of hard to get to. Um, so Dr. Clark, who grew up on a farm, was handy, and he's like, I can just do this myself. So he spent... Um, like vacation time every weekend for the next few months, clearing out all these trees and then using the trees to build a cabin. Um, and soon by Thanksgiving, they were done. And he had also um, laid piping from a local spring for the cabin so they could have fresh water. He built a swimming pool in the back so they could near the brook so we could lounge and watch the trout swimming in the brook. Um, and by Thanksgiving, they were done, like I said. And the, the Clarks decided to spend the holiday in the cabin. They spent time in the pool watching the trout and listening to the owls hoot in the distance. And they agreed that this was their little slice of heaven. So you guys can imagine it, right? It's just, it sounds amazing. It's just like exactly what they wanted. It was perfect. Dude built the cabin by hand. Didn't look great, I'll be honest. I saw some pictures of it. But hey, you know, he did better than I would have done. Good for 1906. Did better than I would have done. So every major holiday and weekends from there on out, they spent at the cabin hiking, swimming, and really enjoying the cabin. That is, until the summer of 1918. So that summer, they were at the cabin, and Dr. Clark was called back to New York for a medical emergency. His wife Harriet was very upset at the prospect of having to be left alone in the middle of the forest for who knows how many days. They were guessing it would be like three to four days. So when she dropped him off at the train platform, she made him promise to come back soon. Dr. Clark promised to come back as soon as he could, um, but he had no idea what his wife would endure for the next few days in the dark entry forest on her own. Dr. Clark made his way back to the, from the medical emergency trip from in New York, and he was only gone for 36 hours. So he wasn't gone very long, uh, but when he got back, his... Wife wasn't there waiting at the train station for him, which is really weird because he wasn't a superstitious guy, but his wife was like really anxious for him to get back. And she knew the moment that he would get back. Like he was literally perfectly on time. Right, man. And he's like, so he immediately got like a really weird feeling about it. So he just got this like feeling in his gut. So he like, he, he makes his way on foot into the dark entry forest. And when he gets to the entry of the forest... Um, to the path that led to the house, he heard all these owls, but they're really loud this time, like super loud. And he's like, "This is weird. This isn't. This doesn't feel right." Because normally the owls made him feel welcome, but this time he felt really scared. So as he was going, the the owls get louder and louder and louder, and they're like all around him, like hooting, like so they must be super close. I'm guessing. And and he's like starting to like really panic because he's like, "What's going on?" So. He gets to the clearing, he sees his house, and he sees the front door is open. That's never good. So he he runs to the front door, and he, like, throws it open. And I'm going to read this part because I don't want to miss any of the details. So he enters the house, and suddenly a loud, high-pitched noise starts coming from the second floor. At that point, it's so loud and startling from all the owls outside the house and the high-pitched noise coming from the second floor that he just completely freezes. And he, he has to figure out what to do to gather the courage to do what he needs to do. So he realizes that the high-pitched noise coming from the second floor is, is actually the sound of maniacal, like, insane laughter. 
Oh my gosh. So sensing that his wife is in danger, or he crazy. like flies up the stairs, runs down their small hallway, and like positions himself in front of the master suite. He can hear it come from the master suite. So this high pitched laughter is coming from this master this master bedroom. So he opens the door slowly to try to like sneak in and In the back corner of the room was his wife. She was on the ground, rolled into a ball, facing the door. Her hands were clenched in fists. Her eyes were wide open um, and unblinking. And her mouth was open wider than humanly possible. As he was staring at his wife, wondering what's going on, he realized that the insanely high-pitched laughter is coming from his wife. But it doesn't even look like it's coming out of her. Her chest is heaving, her mouth, but her mouth is staying open, and the laughter keeps coming out of her. And he, she's staring directly at him. Goodness. So he gets so scared that he just runs, like he just runs out of the house. So <clears throat> during the next during that thirty six oh. hours, something happened uh, to her. We don't we don't really know what it was, but all she sa- kept talking about were these strange creatures in the forest that came and attacked her. So by some accounts, Harriet spent the rest of her life because there's different, you know, different there's in the, in the research, like some people said she spent the rest of her life in in, an insane asylum. And other people said that she went back to New York with Dr. Clark and she took her life. So to this day, Dudley town is abandoned and it's illegal to go in. Like, it was bought up. It's like private residence. There's no trespassing signs all over the place there. But what's a what's a way to get someone to go to a place that you don't want them to go? Just tell them not tell to them go. Tell them not to go. <laughs> so, like, there, there's, like, people people have said, like, like they, they'll, like, walk through and they'll, like, walk through. Like, it'll be, like, a warm summer day and they'll walk through, like patches of like just pure like freezing coldness there's people that said that they've been like like shoved and like tickled and slapped by these like phantom hands that aren't there's no one there and they got like pushed or shoved or something like that um people have said that they've i haven't seen any of these pictures but some people say they've taken pictures and in they can't see them with their eyes but in the pictures they see like these shadow figures and stuff like that so that I have some more details and stuff if you have a, guys have questions, but that's the Dudley Town, Connecticut story. 